home that just bring you comfort, right? You have any comfy blanket to wrap up in, uh, a good cup of coffee or tea while you watch TV or have a quiet time or read your Bible, whatever it is, that um, knowing that you're going to get your mail in a timely manner, not having to worry about whether there's going to be water when you turn the faucet on, right? <laughs> These are all things that are peace bringing. But what about if you're on the road? What if you travel full time in an RV? Or how do you get your mail when your address could be changing all the time? Um, hotel Wi-Fi can be really expensive or RV park Wi-Fi can be really expensive. And security may be an issue in those places also. So what do you do for the internet? And how do you get water when you're not plugged in somewhere at an RV park? Or where do you do your laundry? As somebody that's been thinking about spending time in an RV, you are, you, you have questions that you want answered. And so they're good questions too. And we encourage those questions, but don't let those questions stand in the way of your adventure. If you want um, somebody that's thinking about that, you need to just, let, let's figure this out. And I'm here to help you figure it out so that we can do it together. So what do we do? How are you going to answer these questions? That is the secret sauce to living life on the road. And I, I'll be honest with you, we get this question. Sorry, I got a bit of a light issue here. We're out at a park, a gorgeous park today. Check this place out, right? Stunning, so much fun. But what do you do about light? <laughs> Maybe I could do a video about that. What do you do about lighting when you're in an RV, when you're outside and it's really bright and you're in the shade? So, so we're gonna talk. We're gonna tackle the mail issue, and the internet issue, and laundry and water. If we haven't met yet, my name is Jim Miller. I help people transition smoothly into living in an RV, whether it's gonna be for 14 days or 14 months, so that you can live the adventure that you've always dreamed of. Um, I do this using my my signature maps method, M A P S. Uh, I walk my clients through the process of thinking about the things and taking care of the details that they need to take care of in order to live their next adventure on the road. And so today, I'm going to share with you part of the, the things that we talk about in the planning stage. And what is it? what are some of the details that you need to work through in planning out your next adventure on the road? How is it that you're going to do that? And so today, yes, today, we're going to hit some of the biggest questions that I ever get asked. Now, I'm going to cover these in just a 30,000 foot level. I'm not going to dive into a lot of the details of it. So if you want more information on some of those details, then you can either message me and let's set up a phone call. Um, you can go to my website, explorettheunseen.com without an E. X, so just X-P-L-O-R-E, the unseen.com, all one word. And I've got some information on my website, some blogs there that you can check out that, that cover some information. Um, and you can also set up a, an appointment to talk to me about that. And I can help work through some of those details with you and figure out if it would be a good fit. But these are, these are the big issues that we hit on all the time. And so I just want to encourage you also that if you're thinking about it, if you're trying to consider um, what it is that, that you do for these things, don't let these questions get in the way. All these things are figure outable, as I like to say. All of them. And so... Today, I'm going to hit some of these at a 30,000 foot view to give you an overview of it. And my goal is to let you know that yes, it's possible. Yes, these things have an answer, even if you don't know the answer yet. You can look around and see all these people doing it, living the dream. And we run into people all the time that say, oh man, that would be my dream. I would love to do that. But, and then there's the dot, dot, dot that they fill in afterward. It's just why they can't do it yet. And, you know, we had a lot of those buts also, but we didn't let those stop us. You don't have to let them stop you. If the Miller family can do it, trust me, if the Miller family can do it, so can you. So today, let's dive right in. The biggest question that we get, I think without fail, um, it's not the first one that we get, but it's the biggest one that we get. And this is something that we had never even considered before we started traveling, but what is it that you are going to do to get mail while you're on the road, right? I mean, let's face the facts. The bank still sends you statements in the mail. Maybe not as many. Um, 
let's think about, uh, yes, it's time to think outside the box. Everything is possible. All these things are possible. So let's think about, um, let's think about, you know, the bills that you get in the mail, people trying to send you stuff. We just got our mail-in ballot. Uh, well, Amy got her mail-in ballot. I'm still waiting on mine, the absentee ballot. <laughs> so you had to sign up for hers has come. I still need to call to figure out where mine is because mine isn't here yet. But uh, so there are all these questions that we have to answer. And and this is a this is a genuine, valid question. Where do you get these things sent to? And as we started to research, what we found is there are all kind of mailbox solutions out there. There are mailbox solutions out there. There are people that had thought about this question a long time ago. And so what they did is they came up with a company and the company allows you then to set up a permanent address that receives mail for you. And then it gets that mail in your hands in a way that you, that you want. And so our solution that we found uh, is something called traveling mailbox. And we're actually, uh, we're actually communicating with them about getting an affiliate membership right now. Um, and so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is as soon as that is ironed out, I'm going to put the link to Traveling Mailbox in the box below. Um, but for now, if you want to just go, you don't want to wait on it, that, that's fine. Just go to TravelingMailbox.com and check out what they've got to offer. But what happened is you sign up, you register for a, an account with them, and then they give you an address. Now, different companies have different addresses in different parts of the country so let's say for example that you live in north carolina and you would like to keep your address as a north carolina address then it's really simple because a lot of companies that do traveling mailbox services they have an address that you can get in north carolina if you don't care where your address is that people are mailing stuff to then it's easy you just find a place um you just find a company and they've got them all over that you can that you can use as your hub, but you sign up and then you find a permanent address that you want, a state, and they assign you a mailbox number and an address. And so ours is a Houston address, uh, which is close to where we lived before. So now our permanent address listed is a Houston address, even though we don't technically live there. Okay. so. Um, that makes it really easy then as you do your taxes, uh, you're paying your state taxes, your income taxes, your, your federal taxes, whatever it is, you've got a permanent address. Um, it's also a permanent address that you can use when you get your driver's license or do other things like that. And so this is an easy way, um, this is an easy way to take care of having a permanent address where people send mail to you. Now, with Traveling Mailbox, what they do is they actually get that mail for you and then they ping you and send you a notice. We get an email every time we have mail that comes to them. But on top of that, something that's kind of cool is on top of that, we have an app that you can go to. And what Traveling Mailbox does is they show you a picture of the front of your envelope that you can look at. And then you can say, ah, I... I want you to open and scan this for me. And so they will open the message for the mail and they will scan it and then they'll put it up on the interwebs where you can go and read it. And then you can decide whether you want them to delete it and shred or if you want them to forward that mail to you, then you can have a shipping uh, package that you can add all these letters to. And so just once a, once a month or once every couple months, if you want them to send letters to you that they've been collecting, they can do that. And you get a certain number of scans that they will do for you every month. But then on top of that, they're going to send you stuff um, in the mail. And you can, you just pay like a fee to get all these things forwarded. And so it's like 10 or $15 once a month that we spend for them to send us letters, magazines, things like that, that, that come to us in the mail. So super handy. The other blessing of that is, you know, all the circulars and the, the spam mail that you get all the time. We don't deal with that anymore. They just take it. They take care of it for us. We just don't even look at it. And so it's incredibly helpful for us because now we don't get the Costco and the, you know, all the HEB flyers that, that 
people mail out all the time. So we just don't deal with those. And so now we can go and I can do 90% of our work online, 90% of the mail stuff. We just do it online. If they, and then since they've scanned it for you, if you get, for, for example, when your tax stuff comes in February, you take it and you scan it and then you download the electronic copy and then you can send those electronic copies to your tax, your CPA or your tax person or your financial advisor, whoever it is that you're sending that to. It's so helpful to keep you organized, to keep you think the clutter is gone. All the things It's really, sorry, I got an itchy nose for some reason. Traveling mailbox has been a boon for us. And as Amy says, uh, this is a service that we would use even if <laughs> we are in a permanent home. We're thinking, we're seriously considering keeping traveling mailbox when we get a house. We love it so much. So it's definitely something that is worth the investment, worth the small price that we pay for it. Um, it just makes our life so much more streamlined and, and so easy, it's so easy. We really love it. So mail, super figure outable. And we actually love this solution so much that we're using right now. All right, now let's hit number two. And this is a big one. As many people have gone online and have gone digital um, right now, that internet is a, is a big issue. And especially when you're paying for every gigabyte that you use. So what is it you do for internet? First off, kind of at the top tier level, if, if you're not a heavy internet person, so if you're not somebody that's gonna be doing a lot of watching videos online, uploading videos, doing like what we're doing right now, uh, putting videos out, if you're not gonna be doing a lot of video stuff online, then, then maybe the hotel slash RV park Wi-Fi is a great solution for you. 90% of the RV parks that we go to, the, the exception being state and national parks, have Wi-Fi service in the park. And it's something that you can use to do simple stuff like emails, uh, sending messages, surfing the internet, all the basics. So it's really easy to do. Um, when you start to get into the realm of doing videos, of downloading you know, your YouTube videos, Amazon Prime videos, what have you, now you've got to look at something that's a little bit different service. So what we use is we use a little jetpack, and it's a, a MiFi device that you carry your wireless internet with you. So we have this little hotspot that you can get from Verizon. Um, you can get it from AT&T, Sprint. All of them sell all of them sell a, a hotspot that you can use as a wireless device. And this is the one that we've got now that we're using. And they sell you packs of 20 gigs, 50 gigs, 100 gigs of internet that you can use on a monthly basis. Um, depending on the company, that internet may roll over. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, and also depending on the price point that you're paying. Um, a lot of your, well, now all of your cell phone manufacturers and your internet provider, your, your cell phone providers now have the ability for you to use your cell phone as a hotspot also. The two issues that you have to be aware of are the amount of data that you're using because it can be expensive, mm -hmm. like I mentioned, um, and then the amount of uh, the signal coverage, the coverage that you're going to get with the internet as you're traveling around. The um, internet providers, the cell phone providers have maps that show you the coverage that you get in different parts of the country. I would read reviews of those places before you trust the map. I traveled from Kansas. We were, we were, I was traveling from Houston all the way to Salt Lake City, Utah. And I took the route up through Kansas and Wyoming. And I went three days with no cell phone coverage. Even though the map on Sprint shows that there's cell phone coverage across all those states, it was, I was basically out of touch for not three days, but two and a half days. Um, it's kind of frustrating. And so after a while, we, in, we ended up shifting to Sprint or from Sprint to Verizon and our coverage has increased greatly. Uh, our cost has increased a little bit, but it's peace of mind for us because we need our coverage where we're, wherever we're going because our business runs through it. So um, there's also, you can find these online. There are some grandfathered plans that people will sell you that is true unlimited internet. So you can buy unlimited internet, but at a certain point they cap your speed and they slow down the speed that you're able to broadcast in. But you can go and find some true grandfathered 
unlimited internet speeds. Um, there's going to be a pretty hefty price tag up front, but then afterward, it's a it's a you know, fifty, ninety, hundred, hundred twenty bucks a month to pay for the service um, to get you true unlimited internet. And it's those can be depending on how long you're going to be on the road. Those can be really helpful. So, so we've covered mail, we've covered internet, and now let's get to the number three. And this is a big one for my wife. And with three boys, you can imagine, laundry is a big deal. Uh, so. There are RVs that you can put a stackable washer dryer in, or a one a single unit that does wash and dry cycle. Um, they are fairly expensive, and uh, depending on whether you're going to be stationary or moving, it may or may not be beneficial. So what we did, I just basically did a cost benefit analysis, and we found out that. That for two thousand dollars, we had planned on staying one year. But if he, even if it went to two years, for the two thousand dollars that it was going to cost us to get that unit and put it in the RV and the storage space that we were going to lose, because where that stackable goes is my closet, um, so we were going to lose a lot of storage space, and it was going to be. Uh, we decided that the best for us and what a lot of traveling families do is just finding a local laundry facility or a lot of the RV parks have laundry facilities also he's stopping um, so as we're traveling around now we just go whatever town that we're in we typically go find a laundry facility and the blessing of that is that we can take up six or seven or eight different washers and dryers and be done with it all in an hour and a half or two hours so two weeks worth of laundry or a week's worth of laundry done in two hours is a huge thumbs up as opposed to just you know taking all day to put a load in move it over to the dryer move it out fold it taking a whole day process finding a coin operated laundromat has been really good for us it's been really helpful uh, and a lot of the rv parks have them as well and some of the ones at rv parks are really clean and really they work well other ones like the rv park that we're staying at today we found out after being there for a couple months that there's no hot water to the, to the, the laundry facility. And so all those loads of hot laundry that we had been doing had been done in cold water. Said, you may want to advertise that because there's stuff that we're trying to sanitize that we, anyway. We love our RV park, but they um, that was kind of a, a swing and a miss. But, so there are coin-operated laundromats all over the place. And while we haven't used, well, I hadn't personally used one since college, uh, it's not, I mean, it's honestly, it's not too bad. Drop your stuff in there. Um, get a book that the boys read. Uh, we, we, we read and do, do work on the computer while we're waiting on stuff. We move it all over into a couple of dryers. And then 45 minutes after that, all of our clothes are done. We fold them there at the mat and then bring them home and put them away and done. It's actually, it actually can be kind of nice. So laundromat is super handy they're all over the place there are people all over the place that use them uh, and just we did just kind of a cost, cost benefit analysis and we found out we figured that that was probably a better solution for us so again if you're thinking of that and trying to figure out what you would do i can kind of talk you through that process as well and help you figure out what what would be helpful for you and what would not but it's really not too hard so don't let that be a deterrent from you hitting the road also um, finally and this one's a big deal. Agua, wasser, water. It's something you definitely need to think through. So when we were, uh, whenever you are plugged in in your RV and you're just parked someplace, the vast majority of RV parks have water service to each one of the sites. There are some parks that don't have service to the sites. And so in the instance of those parks, you're going to need to consider um, filling up your water tank and uh, and then using that while you're parked there and then you'll have to go to the what they call the dump station so the dump station is also a spot where you can uh, dump your tanks out your gray tank and your black tank I even I can give you more information about those at a different time but so each RV has a water tank inside of it for fresh water that holds fresh water in that tank you are going to want to 
if you haven't done that or if you're buying a new RV, you're going to want to clean your RV fresh tank before you use it. Trust me on this one. Just trust me. And we were not comfortable just dropping a bunch of chlorine in what was going to be our drinking water source. And so I did a lot of research and found some natural solutions. And so I talk about natural solutions in a video that you can find on my YouTube channel um, about cleaning the freshwater tanks. And it's, it's not a hard process. It takes a little time, but it's not a difficult process. But uh, just using salt and, and vinegar and essential oils, um, I filled up the tank and we let it slosh around in there for a little bit and then drained it out. And so now the tank was sanitized and ready to go. Um, but uh, there are different ways of doing that depending on what kind of an RV you have or what you're looking at. But cleaning out that water tank is going to be a big, uh, something definitely to consider and think through before you do that. So uh, on top of that then is the consideration of what kind of water are you getting from an RV park? So dump stations are very good at labeling clean water, drinkable water, potable water, and not. So there is one hose at a dump station where you dump your gray and black tanks. There's one hose dedicated to cleaning out your, uh, your hoses, <laughs> your, your hoses that connect the tanks to the, the sewer. So there's one hose that's dedicated for use to clean those things out. And it is the not potable hose, but then there's a potable water hose that is separate from that that you should be using to fill up your tanks. Having said that, I've also seen some folks out there um, that do not use that appropriately. And I've seen them take the potable water hose and spray out their sewer. And so something to consider that even when you're drinking the clean water from the RV park, you're going to want to filter it and do some things to help out with that. So we actually have house water filters coming into our RV freshwater tank. Um, and after the, the water comes in, we take an additional measure of using a Berkey water filter um, that we put, uh, put our water in and we use that as our drinking and cooking water. So the water that we're drinking and cooking with is very clean. The water they're washing your hands and showering with is also really clean, but we take a lot of steps to do that. And so um, you definitely want to filter it, but you'll find that there are places that you can get water all over the country. It's not a difficult thing to find. You just have to make sure that you're planning ahead for it. So when you're at an RV park, it's pretty simple. The trick is, though, when you're going between RV parks, making sure that you've got water in your tank that's going to last you for a certain amount of time going from one park to the next. Uh, just as a little, a little bonus information here, I highly suggest getting a flow meter so that when you are about to start to travel and you want to fill your tank up, you can have an idea of exactly how much water you're putting in your tank when you hit the road. Tank, um, the tank meters are notoriously terrible. And as an example, we have an 85-gallon freshwater tank in our RV, and it gives you empty one-third two-third full as the measures and so if you think about what that looks like as you go from zero to 85 gallons how much water have you got in there at what point does it go from empty to one-third is that going to be at five gallons or is that going to be at 30 gallons because it can be anywhere in between there right and so if you've got a flow meter uh which is something that you find at a local hardware hardware store you may be able to find it at a local hardware store i find them on amazon and i order them found out that they are very notoriously cheap and they break really easily and so um so just i order one on amazon and i know that it's 20 bucks that i'm gonna have to spend and i'm gonna have to get a new one probably after a couple of road trips but it's definitely worth it because it limits the amount of weight that you're carrying around when you think about the difference of carrying around one gallon of water that weighs eight gallons versus a hundred gallons of water would be 800 pounds of additional weight on your RV. And so if you want, if you want to keep your family with water and you think, well, we're going to be gone for three or four days. So maybe let's put 50 gallons in. you've added an initial 400 pounds that you're carrying in the RV. And that's a lot to think about. So water's a big deal. 
knowing how much water you've got in your RV is also a big deal. Um, those are just things to think about that you want to, you really want to consider. Okay. So mail, internet, laundry, and water. Those are the four big issues. We kind of hit on all four of them. And as I, as I'm talking, I see that Amy's asked this question. Um, how do you do healthcare, doctor visits on the road? Man, that is a bonus question for sure. And so that's something that we need to uh, we need to cover one day. But I do want you to think about the idea that when you're on the road, um, if you have an emergency medical situation, what are you going to do about it? What do you do about insurance? What do you do about healthcare? What do you do about the costs? What do you do about finding doctors, using doctors? There's a laundry list of stuff. Amy does an amazing job of covering that at Three Life Essentials. Um, and so I highly suggest you go check out some of the videos that she's got at ThreeLifeEssentials.com uh, on her blog there. Um, some of her stuff in her Facebook or different Facebook pages and groups. Uh, she covers a lot of what we do, especially the day-to-day, -day, the small details of just when somebody doesn't feel good. How, how do we stay healthy on the road? That's a big deal. How do we fight germs on the road? Huge deal. Those are all really big concerns. Amy does an incredible job of covering that information at 3 Uh If you message me, um, yeah, that's a whole other series of videos right there. But if you message me, I will help to point you in the right direction of some of those resources that she's got. Um, or if you want to message her, if you know her also, then, then feel free to reach out to her and she can she can begin to have a conversation with you about what do we do personally about making sure that we are healthy. And if you saw a little bit ago, I shared a story about um, about what we do about the windy roads. And this is, this is one of the things that we use to help us make sure that we are not getting sick while we're on the road, that that's not an issue. So those windy roads can be a big deal, especially we have one that's particularly susceptible to it. But... What are the things that we do to make sure that we're healthy while we're traveling around? That's definitely something that you want to consider. So all of this has been a big part of our planning process. What is it that we do to, to plan as we travel? Um, I also want to throw at you a resource that we have. This is our favorite planning resource, where to go, uh, how we're going to get there. So where to go, how we're going to get there, how far it's going to be, how long it's going to take us to get there. Where are the gas stations that we can find that, that have diesel or don't have diesel? So what are some of the things that we use to plan our trips? Amy is the, the queen at this, knowing all the details of how far we're going to go. What is the cost? How much is it going to cost us in gas to get from point A to point, point B? So these are all things that we had to think through and work out a lot. And so I'm going to share with you um, our favorite resource, and it is called... Uh, RV Trip Wizard, and so I'm sending a, a, a visit. I'm sending out a, a place that you can go and check that out. I think it went out. I don't know. I'm gonna try it one more time just to make sure. But this is a this is a resource that we use. It's called RV Trip Wizard, and again, this is an affiliate link. So if you end up signing up for a, an account there, we'll get a small bit of money to to reduce the cost of our account. Basically, is what it'll what it'll do for us, but this is something that we use and we highly recommend that we've had a lot of friends sign up for and they love this resource. So RV Trip Wizard is a fantastic resource for planning out the details of your trip. Um, but uh, listen, I hope that you found some information here helpful. Um, if you have questions about any of these things, then shoot me a message, reach out to me, uh, type in the word details down below. And what I'll do is I'll send you some information in messenger that can be a resource that you can use. And I'll follow up with you to make sure that you know a little bit more that we can have a bit of a deeper dive in a conversation to make sure that you know what's going on on the road. Again, my name is Jim Miller. Uh, I help people get into an RV whether it's for 14 days or 14 months, so that you can live the dream that you've always dreamed of. So I hope that you have a great day. I'll see you here next week at 11 o'clock Pacific time. I'm not sure what time zone we'll be in here next week, but 11 o'clock Pacific time, and I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.